Hi, everybody. Welcome for this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, meeting sorry. We have quite a lot of different topics to cover today. Um, so yeah, let's start. The first one, the first one, it's a small reminder. Um, it's a related to the Docker Hub organization, Docker Jenkins for Eval. So as a quick reminder, that's, that Docker Hub was put in place so people could um, quickly iterate on um, experiments to build Docker image for specific usage. Uh, since the beginning, this um, Docker uh, Hub organization was I mean, that was clear for everybody that it was an untrusted um, Docker, uh, Docker Hub organization because everybody can push image there uh, as long as the person opened the right pull request. So um, yeah, I saw that several people started using those images. Um, again, if we need to have long running Docker image, then we need to engage a conversation to see if we can host them on the Jenkins or Jenkins CI infra organization. And then um, the process to publish image there is better, basically. So yeah, that, that just quick reminder. The second topic that I want to briefly talk here um, is about hosting a new set of um, Docker image for, you have been signed up because you're currently signing with, okay. Someone used the, the CDF accounts, so um, they continue. I think it's fine. Um, so someone requested to uh, that the Jenkins Infra project start building a specific Windows Server Core image um, containing Adopt OpenGDK. Um, targeting the Windows version 19.09. Um, what, um, while initially I was in favor, as long as that person was maintaining the, the Docker file in the process and so on, the reality is it puts strong um, constraints on the infrastructure that we are using and we don't. So basically we need to build Packer image for that specific Windows version and maintain those Packer image. And then we have to update the build process and so on. Um, so considering that um, that version is quite close to the LTS one that we are maintaining, um, I just propose to reject that PR and to close it so we don't keep that PR open for a long time. Um, I think we are quite, yes. Do we, need, um, do, want... do we need to write up a policy or something to say that we'll support the LTS version? And because um, uh, otherwise we'll be, we'll be doing this every six months um, with Windows versions. That's a good suggestion, Garrett, thanks. Um, yeah, and yeah, definitely it's a small, okay. small sentence in the readme to just say. Well, and I think it should be part of that Docker image Jenkins enhancement proposal that we discussed at the contributor summit. Uh, Docker Docker images must have a code owner before we adopt them, accept them, and we will start flagging them as up for adoption when the code owner goes inactive. So, so when when they don't have a code owner. So, yeah, but I still got to write that. But in the, in this case, it's a little bit more because in this case, we also need specific infrastructure. So it's not only about having someone who want to maintain that specific image. It's also about maintaining um, the infrastructure that build those images. Um, so yeah, we we'll reject that PR. Um, the next topic is about CI to Jenkins that I use. So basically last Friday, I did some, I mean, I, I did quite a lot of modification there. First of all, I did some credentials cleanup. So I removed credentials that were not reported as used. Um, obviously, it does not mean that those credentials were not used, but yeah, so maybe maybe I removed a credential so that was effectively, effectively used. Um, so you know what happens. I also reduced the permission of some credentials, like those who create um, resources on Azure. Um, so they can only create resources in a specific resource group. Um, no. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> um, I also took that opportunity to bump the EC2 plugin, so we are now running the latest version. What I noticed after the version updates um, was the EC2 configuration was a huge mess, <coughs> like wrong credentials. Um, EC2 plugins were configured to deploy resources in Japan and stuff like that. So uh, it took me a while to, to reconfigure uh, old images. Um, 
we had a discussion with Damien as the fact that we definitely need the GCAS configuration for the CI touching in Zolayo. While it wouldn't necessarily make sense to deploy CI on Kubernetes right now, it would, um, I mean, would already be able, it would already be nice to just configure that instance, let's say from Puppet. Um, it's not a huge works because we already have everything in place. We have the Puppet agent, we have the process there. So we just have to put in place the, 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 the right templating and it's just ERP uh, templates. Um, so maybe I'll start working with Damien on that. I don't think we need a lot of um, work. Tim Jacob already prepared a lot of things uh, last year. Um, while I'm not sure that we will be able to re reuse everything because the GCAS plugin evolved since then. Um, yeah, it's already a good start. Um, Still, while we are talking about the EC2 plugin, I also saw people complaining uh, a little bit more about timeout issues. Um, and I have the feeling that people stopped complaining um, in the past, but I, I don't know if the problem was still there, but just people stopped complaining or the problem was gone and um, it reappeared. No, it's definitely been a problem always. People yeah. just yeah, okay. so it was, yeah. <laughs> never, never ending source of, of bitterness and frustration as it as it really should be. It's it's really painful. It's especially uh, especially happening on Windows agents for me. And, and if you have high mem, high mem. But it's, whenever I had a plugin that has Windows agents, it's just a nightmare. I'm I'm just wonder I'm just wondering if if we could just redeploy CI the Jenkins that are on Amazon and just have the agent in the same region, maybe that would solve. Because we already have the process to deploy. I mean, CI the Jenkins that are was on Amazon uh, previously. So we already have everything in place to switch back to that location. I, I thought though that we had critical dependencies on Azure container instances. Can we still use Azure container instances if the root is running on on EKS, so we or, can. Or we on, so so on, we so we still we can still use that um, definitely. But this brings me to another topic. Um, oh. Damien has been working on deploying AKS um, on Amazon. So oh. this means that we could just use um, you can we could replace uh, Azure Container instances with Kubernetes pods. Ah, ah, I see. Okay, so the concept. Okay, got it. Thanks. So this, this would reduce the dependency on Azure. Still, that's a, good, that's a good question, given that uh, if we want to achieve somehow a multi-cloud um, uh, capabilities, like let's say one controller for CI Jenkins IO having different Kubernetes cluster, for instance, or a Kube cluster and a bunch of virtual machines to provide, uh, because Kubernetes is not a solution to every problem, so I will say, we need a bunch of different solution, um, we need to have an idea and maybe start thinking, measuring how much bandwidth and data are exchanged daily or monthly between the controller and the agent areas. In particular, because some, let's say, nasty cloud provider, AWS, for not giving any names, uh, tends to give you free trans bandwidth transfer until a certain threshold is met. And then afterward, you have to pay a lot for that. And I'm sure most of the cloud, it's a kind of strategy to keep you inside a cloud and products. And I think this is something that should start be worth measuring now if you want to consider in the future difference uh, migrating scenario like this one. Even though, even if it's completely a parallel topic and not blocking the EC2 timeout and the EKS deployment for CI. Yeah, that's definitely a good point um, because something that I wanted to test was also if different regions would provide us better um, performance. Because I know that um, the, the controller is running on Azure in the US East. Um, and on the other side, Amazon provide different regions um, in US East. So maybe we could use US East too. I mean, I'm not sure if this would improve um, the network performance. Something else to consider about this uh, timeout is that most of the time, the timeout sounds related to the agent to controller connection. And I know for a fact that first WebSocket has solved part of the uh, former GNLP through TCP topics, but still WebSocket is still a tricky protocol to 
to deal between the controller and the agent. And um, we should check that part as well. How uh, do we have a load balancer between the AC2 agent and the CI Jenkins IO? And in that case, we should check how this load balancer is acting at the TCP level. I don't think we have load balancer um, at this level. I mean, not okay. that we deploy ourselves. Okay, so then we should start measuring the TCP connection and setup of the kernel of the VM hosting the CI Jenkins IO as well. And, or maybe checking the logs that we already have about timeouts to be sure what kind of timeout time is it? Can we measure? Is it a timeout while starting the VM? Is it a timeout when the VM try to con connect back to the, the controller? The, 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 or the, the other way around the, the SSH the, the, part? The, the challenge that we have here is um, those agents are dynamic and we don't have any monitoring list there. So we don't collect data right now. And also sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. So maybe one of the solution would be to add um, uh, a data log agent there. So we could start creating information or, yeah. I just have, I have, I just have to, to double check about the, the credentials because then it means that if we do those experiments on CI, the Jenkins that I use, um, yeah. Again, see how the Jenkins that I use is not a very trusted instance. Just to confirm what you're saying, that you're, you, you're, you're thinking of moving see the Jenkins that I to AWS, but the controller would not be running on Kubernetes. Yes. And the, but the agents would be running on Kubernetes, obviously yeah. apart from potentially some packer images or whatever yeah. that we need. So the, so the reason why I feel uncomfortable to switch it directly to Kubernetes is because we already have some processes in place to manage that instance. So for instance, Daniel, when, do, when you do a security release SSH on that machine, um, restart the pod and stuff like that. And so considering all the other things that we have to work on, um, I'm not sure that switching to Kubernetes will um, bring enough value to that instance right now. I, mean, I, I mean, think it will bring an awful lot of value, but I, I think it's a trade-off between the value and the effort, possibly. Yeah, that, that's what I mean by uh, switching. Um, so we, we still need to fix the EC2 timeout uh, because we will still need VMs provision dynamically. That's something we cannot avoid. So yeah, that, that's why I feel uncomfortable to just really play Seattle Jenkins Radio on the Kubernetes cluster because I don't think it will solve our short term issues. Um, but but switching the controller to AWS means that the timeout between the virtual machines that we provision and the controller would be closer or shorter because they will be running in the same region in the same cloud account versus uh, multi-cloud. Mm. And regarding the ACI uh, issues that we had today, isn't how is the workload uh, split between the ACI agent and the EC2 agents? So it depends on the labels, on the labels. Um, depending on what you need, if you just need to run something in Maven, then we just provision a Maven container. Um, and, and you do the workload there. But if for some reason you need to run um, a lot of tests and you need you need an EC2 machine, I mean, a virtual machine for specific use cases, um, then we need the EC2 plugin. So right now we need both um, because it depends on, on, what, on what we test. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the ATH test need a full, a full machine. Um, but yeah, it depends. I mean, on, the, on that topic, I don't, I don't have strong opinion. Um, I think we can provide both and both have their. Okay, do we understand correctly that uh, potentially ACI agent could be replaced by Kubernetes agent that could be NKS while- that, 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 that's, that's, yep. that's what I said um, okay. like five minutes ago that um, if the work on AKS is ready, 
um, and we can start using that cluster to, to for the CI, the Jenkins IO region. That would mean that every resources will be in Amazon, in the Amazon accounts. So if we have the EC2 in a region, if we have the EKS in the same account, we could easily move uh, CI, the Jenkins IO to the Amazon. So we would have everything in the same place. And so obviously the, um, the, the timeout issue, I mean, the, 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 um, the response time will be smaller. <laughs> And so the, the reason why I was saying that is because in the Puppet, um, in the Puppet configuration, everything was running on Amazon in the past. So we were using EC2, we were using um, uh, the name, but yeah, the, the equivalent of SCI. And, and we were using SCS, I think. Um, and everything was running in Amazon. And then we did uh, the migration to Azure. And then, then that's why we start using Azure Virtual Machine um, SCI for the containers and the controller was put on Azure and then we are doing the migration back. Um, the good point that you raise here, Damien, is we don't know what the future will be. So if we can run as many as we can in occurrences, this gives us um, the freedom to move between cloud vendors. Um, but yeah, for now, um, I think it's better to just focus on the agent issues than where the controller is running. And if it can help to move the controller, then let's move that controller. Are there any um, regional problems around having infra and releases not being in the same area as CI, I think is so? You mean, you mean for the release environment? Yeah, and for infra. Um, so, so the other, so the other have, um, so they are just independent. So um, the trust. So right now we have multiple Jenkins instance. Um, what they all have in common is they fetch the code from the same GitHub organization and then push artifact. But for instance, we don't we don't generate artifact from CI the Jenkins layer to push in the different location. So right now we have less. I mean, for instance, for release.ci or infra.ci, it's fully running on Kubernetes. So we just provision pod when we need that. Um, Zer.ci and trust.ci um, have a much lower um, usage. I mean, they just provision nodes from time to time just to, to do some specific tests. Um, but yeah, CI, CI, the check is definitely the biggest one. Um, but yeah, we, we try to keep everything there in the balance of everything else. Any last question on this topic? So, so the next and the next point is for me working with Debian to configure um, Gcask. So this will definitely help us in the future when we have the issues like what we have on Friday, when we have to reconfigure everything and audit and try to understand what changed when and so on. So this will definitely simplify the management uh, of the configuration there. Um, and then we'll probably try to identify how we can add um, monitoring agent to dynamic agents. So how we can add monitoring to those agents. Um, so we could maybe better monitor uh, performances. So if you don't have any more question, um, I go directly to the next point. Um, so basically I mentioned AKS. So Damien work on a Terraform code provision and AKS cluster, we are almost there. Um, as far as I know, uh, what is what remain is um, the credentials that we would have to put. Um, so how to automate? So no, sorry, we we still have small configuration for that cluster. Um, let's say if we want the data dog agent, or basically what we need there. But ultimately, this cluster should only will only be used by CI the Jenkins that I use. So we 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 are just thinking the best way to configure that cluster. Um, and also we have to, to, to create an account that, that we can use to connect between ci.jenkins.io and that cluster. So the cluster is running, but yeah, we are fine tuning the configuration.
the next topic, which is about ingress controller. So this one is related to the main cluster that we have right now. So historically, we've been using um, the Nginx controller. So the controller is the Nginx controller was the, um, the the service that receive HTTP requests and then forward those to the different websites like Javadog, plugin sites, um, main website, and so on. VPN broken, should not. Uh, let's, look, let's look at that after. Um, I'm sorry uh, for that. Um, so those those Nginx controller are still running, um, are still using the Ham V2. Um, ham charts. We we have to move not ham v3, and we took this opportunity to deploy traffic and to experiment with traffic. Um, the, con the the those ingress controller already. Um, so the plan is now to switch the private service. So like infra.ci release.ci, um, just to validate that everything work as expected, and then we'll start switching uh, the public services. There is only one that is tricky, which is the LDAP, um, because it's a stateful application. But yeah, it's only it's only DNS configuration change, so we, we have to plan to work on that. Any question? So I propose to switch to the to the next to the. To the next topic, which was bring by um, Mark. You want to talk about duty experience improvements? Yeah, I just I was going to alert people that I intend to schedule a session, Olivier, with you and me and probably Damien to work through what does it take to make the on duty ex the pager duty experience better. I again yesterday got five or six or seven alerts telling me weird response time that I didn't quite know what to do and I'd like to learn about how to do it better. So I'm just gonna schedule a session. I assume we can do it in public and allow other anyone who wants to, to join, but, but I would like to understand what tuning we need to do to help that experience be better for me. Okay, sure, yeah, let's plan that. Add, if you could add me in on that, Mark, because I also got the same sort of alerts over the weekend, but I didn't know. Okay, let's let's plan that session. Absolutely, just to, I'll do that. Just just for the context, uh, we 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 have monitoring in place to detect many different issues, and one of them is if a website is getting slow. And what we have, I mean, and more often at the moment is um, situation where the website is is slow. Uh, we get an alert, and then the issue resolves by itself after 15 minutes. And so we get a lot of notifications saying that some services are, are slow, um, even if everything is working normally. So yeah, we have to fine tune the threshold alerts. Right, and, and for me, it's a great excuse to learn more about Datadog, to learn how we can use it effectively, and how do we adjust it when we, we when we want. So I'll just be scheduling it. That's all. The, the good thing is it's mainly about modifying Terraform codes, so should be should be easy. Um, next, last topic: um, the Jenkins release to the two hundred seventy-seven dot one was released tomorrow, and I think everything went well. Went well. Um, I'm always happy to see that the release environments um, work. Oh, so it's today's work, today's weekly went great. Passed the checklist, everything worked. Tomorrow's. Yeah. Tomorrow is a much different. bigger deal, is a much bigger thing, and I haven't done the release checklist in detail yet. I'll do that after meetings end today. So, like, think four or five hours from now. Okay. Um, we don't have any other topic um, to the agenda, so I propose to... I have one last that, I, sure. that just uh, arrived five minutes before the meeting. That's why I haven't blocked it in the notes. I have a, So I have Two feedback about the uh, two cloud companies. So the company named Outscales providing an EC2 compliant, uh, they are not willing to, um, in the end, they are not willing to sponsor because they sure. prefer uh, keep using free software and not giving back, literally in French in the text. Uh, yeah. I've been told so. Uh, and I have a feedback from Scaleway. They are OK, but they need us to help them uh, defining the amount of resources we 
we will plan to use on a Kubernetes cluster for the agents. And since I have exactly the same requirement to size correctly the EKS cluster nodes, um, that should be an interesting topic. So if uh, if we can schedule a discussion or a meeting or whatever, or tickets in Jira with this information, I'm sure there are already uh, some documentations and metrics that are available. But yes, I need help on that topic in order to be sure how much machine are we gonna pay on AWS and how much can we ask to scale away as well? Okay, yep. that, that would be a nice exercise, yes, definitely. Um, I was just gonna mention the switching over of infra and releases to the pre sort of built Docker images is still kind of blocked on the versioning stuff, uh, which is still blocked on uh, Jenkins pipeline unit test changes. Okay. Um, so if you have any influence uh, in the Jenkins pipeline unit project, that would be great. So okay, the... could you could could you put some links here in the documents? So yeah, so the the, the change has been merged, but I can't use it until I have a release. And okay, so that was that was the thing I wanted to check, Gareth. Is I saw that it had been merged. But a merge is not enough. We need a new release of it. Yeah, unless there, unless anyone knows of a way of pulling a release, pulling a snapshot of that project, or we can build it manually and upload it to somewhere, or Actually, build it I, messy. But I mean, you hadn't asked for a release, so I've just asked. I, mean, I have asked for a release, but okay, on, if, on, I'm, if on I'm asking, in the, uh, I asked for a release. It was a different one. The, in another issue that I did get feedback on. Okay. But it, assigned, it, it got assigned I, to somebody else yeah. to do it. Okay, yeah, you've got a specific issue. There's two people. I thought it was NRE normally. I mean, he replied yesterday saying he'd do it. I guess it should get sorted soon. And just keep chasing. Could you put the link to those PRs and issues in the, the Google Notes yeah. so other people can follow? Sure. I mean, what is the sort of, is there a, the stuff that's kind of quite critical to what we need? Do we have the ability to cut our own release on some of these projects? And, and the answer is yes, we can depend on a pipeline library by, um, I think we can depend on a pipeline library by SHA-1. At least it's I've not, done. This, this, this isn't a pipeline library. This is a Maven project. Oh, oh, okay. It's, a, it's it's just it's just like any other library. We're not, we're not the maintainers of that project. Um, Got it. So it's it's delivering a jar file, Tim. Not a not a uh, not just some groovy code. Yeah. No, it's so it's it's someone has written this library and they're maintaining it. Um, Seeing how it is, a lot of documentation. Yeah. It's not something that we have control over. Okay. But yeah, just need to nudge them. The more we nudge, the quicker it'll get done normally. They've had a couple of nudges, so give them another couple of days. Unless there's any workaround you can do in the code to work around it in the meantime, or is it just the workaround is not possible or too difficult? I mean, I can fork it and publish it under a different group of, group of artifact ID or something. Um, yeah, I wouldn't bother with that, but it's just, there's nothing you can, yeah. I, just, I just mean, can you inline something into the library Temporarily, or um, or even just comment out the part of the test that fails. I'm not sure specifically how bad it is, and just say to do. But once library is bumped, uncomment. Uh, so I, I, I could. I would be removing all the existing tests we have for that part of the functionality, right? Which fe it feels uh, a bit too dirty. <laughs> I just just coming back to. I, it I think of, and, and I think Damien. I think Damien added them all as well. So I, I don't want to remove this. <laughs> yeah. 
give, uh, give them a couple of days and then maybe email them if you need to. Normally gets people moving. Okay. Any last things you want to bring? Oh, we are, but we are over the time. So I propose to stop here and continue the discussion in RSC. Um, thanks everybody for your time and see you. Bye-bye.